So lytic versus a lysogenic cycle, what's the difference? Well, first things first, we need to understand what a virus is. So a virus is a microscopic infective agent that has DNA within its protein coat that is able to reproduce by infecting the cells of a host and create copies of itself within that host cell. Viruses can only infect a specific type of host that can range from plants to bacteria to humans and animals. However, this viral specificity does not stop there. For humans, different types of viruses can infect certain cells. For example, the influenza infects lung cells and the polio virus infects nerve cells. So once the virus enters the specific host and finds its specific cells to infect, a cycle of reproduction takes place. There are two types of processes, lytic and lysogenic. So all viruses can replicate themselves using the lytic cycle, but only some can use the lysogenic cycle as well. Depending on how many host cells are nearby, the virus may either use lytic or lysogenic. So if there's only a few cells around, it will use lysogenic. But if there's like many, it will use the lytic cycle. When a virus reproduces through the lytic cycle, it goes through six stages. An example of a virus that has a lytic cycle is influenza. So when an animal virus reproduces through the lytic cycle, the first stage is attachment, where the virus attaches its protein spikes to the receptors of the host cell. The second stage is penetration, where the envelope of the virus fuses with the membrane of the host cell, which then the capsid is released into the cell. The third stage is encoding, where the genetic information of the virus is released into the host cell. The fourth stage is biosynthesis, where the genetic information enters the host cell's nucleus and it takes control and creates copies of itself. The fifth stage is assembly, where new viruses are assembled. And the final stage is release, where the newly assembled viruses are released from the host cell to find and infect other cells. And those new viruses infect other cells and continue this process. What makes the lysogenic cycle different from the lytic cycle is that all viruses can reproduce using the lytic cycle, but only a few can reproduce using the lysogenic cycle. This is because when they are infecting host cells and there's not as many nearby other cells that they can infect, they use the lysogenic cycle to create new cells with the virus already embedded in the genome. An example of a lysogenic cycle virus is HIV. Like the lytic cycle, the lysogenic cycle has the first same three stages, attachment, penetration, and encoding. The fourth stage is integration, where the viral DNA slash RNA combines with the host cell's genetic information. The fifth stage is cell division, where the host cell splits to replicate itself. The result of this process is a new viral cell that repeats this process while hiding from immune cells in plain sight. There is also an extra step called excision. This is when the virus is under stressful conditions and the viral genome will undergo excision and enter the lytic cycle. So that is all I have for lytic and lysogenic reproduction cycles of animal viruses. I learned a lot while researching for this project and definitely have a deeper understanding about diseases and definitely what's going on today, like COVID-19. So thank you for taking the time to watch and stay safe.